Hello everybody, this is Mithril Zenith. A couple videos ago, I talked about javelins. I talked about how I think that they are the most uh, influential and most game warping weapons in Fire Emblem. And I had some requests to talk more about the hand axe in particular. Because mostly I focused on javelins, even though what I said could pretty much be applied to both javelins and hand axes, I felt that javelins were more the problem. So let's talk about hand axes and why I think they are both more and less problematic in different circumstances. So the hand axe has been a weapon ever since the very beginning, like the javelin. Um, it's been an axe, it's been generally heavy, it's been 1-2 range, it generally has limited uses, but it generally is very low requirements. Like in the GBA games, hand axes require E rank, whereas javelins require D rank. So anyone who can use an axe can use a hand axe, at least in the GBA games. It later got bumped back up to D and standardized as of Radiant Dawn. Hand axe. What can I say about it? So, javelins could be used by cavaliers, pegasus knights, armor knights, um, anyone who can pick up a lance, so playable soldiers, uh, playable spear masters, um, but generally, the big ones were Pegasus Knights and Cavaliers. Pegasus Knights, Wyvern Knights, Cavaliers. Units with high movement, who then also have good stats, who then also have 1-2 to two range access, who then kind of dominate and warp the game around them. Hand Axes are a bit different. So Hand Axes could be used by fighters, pirates, brigands, um... Those are the primary ones. Uh, heroes got hand axes because they got axe access. Uh, in specific games, uh, Blazing Blade, Binding Blade, I think. Binding Blade, Blazing Blade, and then the Tellius games, you could have Cavaliers. Or not Cavaliers, but Paladins with axe access because they decided, so let's give them full control of the weapon triangle, why don't we? Let, you know, they need to get a weapon too when they promote, right? No, they don't. And so some people will say that hand axes are the bigger problem in uh, Blazing Blade as opposed to Javelins. There's some give and take there, because hand axes generally will weigh down your paladins, whereas Javelins won't, hand axes build Javelins won't. Um, but I think hand axes are actually a more interesting weapon, because they're on a more limited niche uh, unit type. And from the very beginning, we see that. Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light, you had access to four... Yeah, four axe-wielding units across the entire game. You got them all in Chapter 2. That's Board Cord, Barst, and Daros. No one else could use axes in the playable cast. You actually stopped being able to buy new axes in, like, Chapter 9 or 13. Hand axes were weak, they were inaccurate, um, they had limited uses, they were heavy. And they were on units that couldn't promote, that had uh, generally not the best stats, except for Barst, who was insane stat-wise. They were meant to be kind of something to give enemies, something to give your units to mix things up a little bit. To give your axe units a little bit more variety and utility in what they could do. Ultimately, with the idea that your axe units would be rotated out for more professional soldiers later on as you got them in your army. That's obviously not necessarily what happened, but that is kind of what happens a little bit if you play optimally with like all cavaliers and pegasus knights and stuff like that. The hand axe was designed to be a utility option, and it serves its purpose well. It's not powerful enough to replace the... it's not act not powerful enough, but primarily it's not accurate enough to replace the need for dedicated archers. Accuracy is huge in the older Fire Emblem games, and having 60 accuracy, 50 accuracy, cuts a hand axe's usefulness greatly. Then <laughs> we see the hand axe come into its own in like Thracia, where you have units like uh, Orson, um, a lot of good axe units in Thracia. Orson, granted he has the, uh, uh, whatever it's called, not the Puji anymore, it's the, um, Pugil, whatever, Orson's personal axe, he has that, um, 
have a lot of units that can use axes that are pretty strong. Then you enter the bl Binding Blade, the GBA era, with hand axes galore. Paladins can use hand axes. War heroes can use hand axes. Warriors. Um, if you ever get like a playable Berserker, hand axes are great on them. Hand axes still have low accuracy, but because unit skill and luck gets higher, and there are more things like supports to increase accuracy, you can get quite accurate with your hand axes to a point where you're not really gonna miss. You're gonna see like 80 to 90 percent hit rates. Also, having that 2RN uh, calculated makes hand axes a lot better because seeing an 80 percent means you're closer to like 90 something percent actual hit, whereas you know before 80 percent is 80 percent. Get better accuracy, dude. Hand axes then continue to be kind of game defining, despite the fact that they get weaker and weaker as time goes on. They just see more and more use as axe units get better in general. And so, hand axes are less problematic than javelins, but can become more problematic if they're allowed to be used on stronger units. The reason hand axes have gotten better over time is because axe wielding units have gotten better over time. Axe building units used to be these weak filler units in your army that just kind of were there to soak some damage and to deal some hits, but they're meant to be inaccurate and unreliable. They've gotten better over time to the point where some of the best units in the game are axe units. Wyvern Riders use axes primarily. Uh, you have units like Har and Jill uh, and Radiant Dawn who use axes. You have uh, heroes can use axes. You have... Uh, Hector using axes, Edelgard using axes, uh, technically anyone using axes in three houses, but three houses is different. Um, you have axes everywhere, and these axe units can define their games. Fates has the same limitation on all one, two range weapons, which I think is fair. Um, but yeah, so hand axes I think are a more interesting weapon than javelins, and as such, I think they're inherently less problematic because they're on units that are meant to be more utility swing units or like specialist units like berserkers, fighters, heroes. They're meant to be durable, take hits, give hits, but they're the overall less, less generally mobile units outside of Radiant Dawn and later Draco Knights. Javelins are more problematic, in my opinion, because they're on Cavaliers, because they're on Pegasus Knights, because they're ubiquitous and everywhere among the most high movement units, which can then be invested into to become the highest statted units, which can then just dominate the game. Hand axes, you have to deliberately, not in all games, but most games, use a unit that is subpar in some way in order to get the benefit of the hand axe. Like, Gonzalez in Binding Blade with hand axes can be amazing if you put the effort into training him, and even then he's inaccurate. But he can stand on mountains and peaks, and he can be pretty good in that way. I think hand axes are pretty interesting. I think hand axes are a good weapon. They're solidly designed, and the only risk of hand axes becoming as ubiquitous or stronger than javelins is if they're given to units that are stronger, to units that are more ubiquitous. Hand axe is good. Javelin's good too, but I think Javelin just needs a little bit of a closer look, shall we say. But that's enough about hand axes. What are your thoughts? Leave a comment down below about what weapons you'd like to see me cover in this series later on. And until next time, this is Mithril Zenith, signing out.